Hello everyone. So today was um, June 25th, the 25th day of the speeding challenge. And um, based on a recent lesson I had with um, uh, some students learning French and Spanish from scratch, I'm reflecting a little bit on um, what would I do if I went back to the beginning, what would I do differently um, for learning a language? And what I've been observing now, um, more than when I was in high school learning these languages, is just the sheer amount of noise and resources that exist um, in the market. It's just oversaturated with books, videos, methods, MP3, I don't know, CDs, methods that listening, um, audio methods like Pimsleur or Michelle Thomas or um, Asimil, it's, uh, podcasts, YouTube channels, what else, uh, just apps, um, websites and things. So anybody who wants to start, if they just start to do a Google search for like start learning French, um, they're going to get overwhelmed with just so much information um, that it's going to be very, very overwhelming uh, to try to sort through everything and to try to figure out which resources are um, of value, which ones are maybe a bit more of a clickbait, um, which ones will maybe be more confusing than helpful. Um, which ones will just keep you busy, but not actually making tangible progress. So um, I, I empathize with that um, now that I'm kind of really helping more students with those back to basics things. Um, and I would say that part of my success early on well, one is like I had just the one textbook at school. We just did that. We used that. But um, what I also used was the like French in Action series. Um, I watched all of those. I made my own tapes with them. I, I um, compiled them into like four six hour tapes for the uh, 30 minute lessons and I would just watch them again and again and again. So it was constant exposure to the language for pronunciation, listening practice, acquiring new vocabulary. Everything was in French. So it was just all just like lots and lots of exposure. Um, and I wasn't really overwhelming myself with, okay, I need to I need to work on this, I need to work on that, I need to check this out. And what that ends up doing is is creating a bit of a shallow, shallow depth with different resources, maybe not making a lot of progress and then moving over to a different one. In some cases though, I did like diving deep thematically so if I had a couple of resource books and reference books, let's say for, if I was going to work on the passé composé in French, um, I would go into all of those different books and look at what was their definition or what was their description, what was their, their explanation for that particular topic what exercises would they do with it? And then I would, I mean, because these grammar books, they can't like, not 
all of them can teach everything. Some of them have strengths and weaknesses. Um, so by cutting across multiple resources, but with the same topic, uh, it created a much more um, in-depth kind of with different perspectives uh, for that. So that was one thing where I did see some benefit in having multiple resources to look at and com compare contrast in case one could have been a little confusing the way it explained it or the examples that were being used. Uh, if they were being like maybe too technical or on or easily understandable. Um, so I think now going back to basics, it would be having a method that I could use for several months, uh, maybe having a teacher to guide me so I wouldn't get lost and that I could put together a, a, a strategy, a plan uh, and, and monitor my progress because sometimes just doing this alone uh, and what I see with students with like the kind of Duolingo, Memorize, Rosetta Stone, Pimsleur, kind of they're treading water sometimes, maybe not making major progress until they somehow make a breakthrough. Um, in one particular case, I think this breakthrough was the student starting to work with me and I could kind of give them a strategy, give them a plan and, and help them figure out what to do next. Uh, so uh, that's what I would basically try to do is kind of give myself a plan, have a method that I could work with because trying to supplement everything, it's, it's, a lot, it's very demanding. Um, it requires a lot of inspiration and, and looking for materials, looking for what, what next to learn. Um, but yeah, I would try to limit a few of those things so I don't get overwhelmed. That's, I guess, the biggest thing I would do for starting from scratch. Um, Hola a todos. Hoy es el día 25. En el desafío estamos hablando de qué haríamos para empezar un idioma desde cero o, o reiniciar que haríamos diferente. Y pienso que, por ejemplo, para el español, que ya llevo uh, 25 años con el español, um, pues um, cuando empecé uh, nada más tenía como el libro de la escuela, um, aprendí con eso. Uh, yo creo que mi papá tenía acceso a um, los cassettes uh, audio de Pimpler. A veces escuchaba eso un poco para como, activar el idioma. Y pues um, con eso logré aprender um, y veo mucha gente hoy en día que tienen acceso a demasiadas cosas, recursos de aplicaciones, libros, canales de YouTube, podcasts, um, muchas cosas y... y um, y, y puede ser demasiado porque pues hay mucho ruido, hay mucha actividad y tal vez um, no hay una retención o una práctica activa para poner en como uso todo ese vocabulario y las frases y a veces hay cosas que no son útiles. Que, que están para vender una aplicación, pero tal vez no has construido por alguien que sabe aprender. Um, y yo creo que entiendo esa frustración de, de no estar avanzando mucho. 
y necesitar ayuda o una guía o un profesor que, que, que puede um, facilitar ese proceso. Uh, bonjour tout le monde, aujourd'hui c'est le 25e jour du défi en juin. On est en train de parler de qu'est-ce qu'on ferait différemment si on pouvait recommencer euh, les études d'une langue étrangère. Et je crois que euh, pour moi, ce qui, ce qui marchait bien quand j'étais au lycée, c'est que j'avais mon livre de l'école, j'étudiais ça. Euh, des fois un peu à peine, euh, mais pour le français, c'était surtout le français en action, que j'avais les vidéocassettes, je regardais euh, tout le temps, constamment, pour euh, être exposé à la compréhension orale, nouveau vocabulaire, euh, la grammaire, et puis euh, essayer de pratiquer ce que j'écoutais. Um, et à force de répéter et répéter, ça entrait uh, et ça devenait presque un réflexe. Et quoi d'autre? Um, je vois que beaucoup de gens aujourd'hui, ils sont um, éblouis par la quantité de ressources qu'il existe pour les livres, des, des chaînes de YouTube, des podcasts, des livres des méthodes, um, ça peut être trop et ça fait beaucoup de bruit et um, des gens n'ont peut-être pas un, un plan de travail ou un programme avec uh, des dates limites, donc ça peut être uh, comment, des, des activités mais sans vraiment faire du progrès. Et c'est dommage, euh, donc je crois que c'est important d'avoir un plan de travail, peut-être un, un guide, un, un prof qui peut euh, aider avec le progrès et les évaluations pour voir s'il si, si, si y a un peu de travail chaque jour et si quelque chose ne marche pas, le, bah, le changer, faire autrement et ça c'est surtout ce que je ferai pour, comme une recommandation. Um, ciao a tutti, oggi è il giorno 25, parliamo un po' di um, cosa fare se possiamo um, imparare una lingua um, di altra maniera. Uh, penso che quando ho imparato il spagnolo e il francese uh, solo avevo il libro um, per imparare e questo era tutto e mi ha aiutato molto e vedo che Uh, molte persone oggi uh, hanno uh, troppo uh, uh, libri, applicazioni, uh, um, cosa più, uh, canali di YouTube, podcast di, e e molta attività senza uh, progresso um, e questo è difficile per molte persone. Uh, penso che è importante avere um, un plan di azione, uh, un calendario per sapere quanto tempo ha o c'è e cosa fare ogni giorno. 
eh, e un professore mh, può aiutare per continuare a imparare bene ogni giorno. Uh, questo è, è tutto. Um, hallo an alle, heute ist der uh, 25. des Juni und uh, sprechen wir ein bisschen über um, was uh, werden wir machen für ein Fremdsprache lernen, um, wenn wir können beginnen um, und uh, ich denke, dass uh, wenn dann habe ich um, Spanisch und uh, Französisch gelernt. Um, es war mit nur ein Buch uh, in der Schule und um, ich habe es viel benutzen und, um, und dann für Französisch ich habe ein Programm um, gesehen French in Action und es war uh, viele 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 sehen jeden Tag und uh, es war wunderbar für um, hören, verstehen, uh, neue Vokabeln lernen, uh, pronunciation, um, wie sagt man das? Um, und uh, jetzt, ich, ich, ich sehe, dass uh, viele Leute haben um, zu viele Dinge, uh, zu viele Bücher, zu viele Audio auf YouTube, Podcast, äh, Method I, und es ist schwer wissen, ähm, was machen mit äh, die Zeit jeden Tag und ähm, ich, ich denke, das ist äh, sehr äh, schwer äh, lernen allein. Uh, jetzt, um, das ist ein bisschen einfach, nichts machen und uh, uh, nicht wissen, um, wenn wir zu bessern oder nein. Und ich, ich denke, dass so ein Professor Uh, hilft sehr mit S und uh, das ist uh, ja das ist alle für heute vielen Dank uh, Psyam Privet uh, Svonia war Svonia Bill <lacht> um, 20 uh, Piat Piat Idein um, I Challenger I мы поговорим немного о, о том, что как изучать иностранный язык э, с нула. И думаю, что когда я начал изучать испанский язык и также французский язык, э, у меня был только... Э, Uh, одна книга, я чифа, читал uh, эту и также для французс французского uh, я смотрел uh, сериал uh, каждый день French in Action и это помогало мне много, чтобы um, слушать, понимать um, новые слова, выучить um, произношение, так что 
И сейчас думаю, что для многих, многих людей эм, это трудно, потому что э, сейчас эм, у них есть много-много-много э, вещей, э, э, книги, кни, книг, эм, каналы на YouTube, подкасты, apps, uh, app, uh, um, и, и это трудно знать, uh, как использовать uh, время каждый день и, и увидеть uh, прогресс. Uh, я думаю, что это возможно um, работать с профессором um, и так думаю что это все на сегодня большое спасибо и uh, пока